My name is Agnes Grunwald Spear. I was a baby in the Holocaust in Budapest and I've had a very fairly varied career and now at the age of 73 I've just finished writing my third book on the Holocaust. My parents were both Hungarian and they were married in Budapest in 1942. Uh, you probably don't know that Hungary was the last country to be occupied by the Germans. It wasn't occupied till the 19th of March 1944 but the Hungarians had their own anti-Semitic legislation and my father was rounded up as a forced labourer in 1943 by the Hungarian fascists and it really ruined his life. He had a very bad time. Most of the young Jewish men who went away as forced labourers did not come back because they were so badly treated. But he did come back, but he was very embittered. He wouldn't have any more children after the war. My mother was the eldest of four girls, and she would have liked more children, but he said it wasn't a world to bring children into. And in 1955, when I was 10, he committed suicide. Um, I'm sure you know that many Holocaust survivors did commit suicide quite some time after the war. My mother had to leave her flat in June 1944. I was born in July 1944, and she had to go to an area that was designated for Jewish women in what were called Star of David houses, I understand. Um, and then when I was coming, um, she had to go to a clinic because the ordinary maternity hospital wasn't open to her as a Jew. Meanwhile, uh, her father had been taken away. He was on a bus and he'd been looking forward to my birth because I was the first grandchild of his four daughters. Um, and he was on a bus and the Nazis stopped the bus and asked if there were any Jews on the bus. And you couldn't deny that you were a Jew because your documents had a big red J stamped on them. So he was taken off the bus and and he was never seen again, but it wasn't till after the war that they discovered that he'd been taken to Auschwitz. And he was probably gassed the day he arrived because um, it was only the people that were registered for work who were given a number if they were gassed on arrival. But there's no real record, so I've not been able to find out what happened to him. So again, she went back to the Star of David house and we were there until November when we were sent to the ghetto. The ghetto was not a good place to be because it was bitterly cold and there was no fuel other than I think burning old furniture, um, very little food. My mother was able to breastfeed me even though she didn't have much or anything to eat. Um, and the Arrow Cross who were the Hungarian fascists uh, like to take pot shots at the Jews in the ghetto. So a lot of people died. My, my mother's cousin uh, told me after my mother died that he'd, um, he'd been there when Budapest was liberated and he found my mother sitting on some steps in the ghetto holding me surrounded by dead bodies. So um, we were very lucky to survive because I was only six months old and to bring a baby through that. I think she must have, um, she did a remarkable job really to keep me warm and keep me fed. And then my father came back in March 1945 and she'd always made up her mind and she was a very determined woman that she would leave Hungary because of the anti-Semitism. It's always been very anti-Semitic. And it was, I think it was early 1946 when they found that there was a train going from, Vienna, from Budapest to Vienna and they managed to get on it through bribery or whatever. And so we arrived in Vienna in 1946 and we were displaced persons. And my mother, as I said, was the eldest of four and the second one, Clara, had come to England in 1939 and so you had to have a guarantor to come to England. And so she signed the papers 
and eventually we arrived in England in May 1947. I was two and three quarters and I remember the journey. I don't know whether we spent one or two nights on the train, but I can remember going to sleep in the bunk at the bottom with my mother and waking up and my mother was in the bunk above with my father. Yeah, we moved to Sutton and um, we lived in various furnished rooms initially. And uh, I remember in one, um, there were a lot of, it was a very big house, there were a lot of people uh, renting rooms there. And there was one girl who was getting married. And in those days, it was very difficult to get fabrics, you know, everything was on coupons. And she had an old parachute. And in those days, the parachutes were made from white silk. And so they sat my mother down in front of a sewing machine. They said, you're from Vienna, you must be able to sew. And my mother was absolutely dumbfounded because in Budapest, before the war, she'd always gone to dressmakers. She'd never sewn anything. Anyhow, she, um, she made the wedding dress and she made a whole trousseau out of this parachute silk. And um, eventually my parents had got enough money, goodness knows how, to buy a little house. And um, then we lived in that little house. And as I said before, my father committed suicide when I was 10. But um, I got a fantastic education uh, for free. And, um, and I went to college and um, eventually I met a chap and um, I married him. And we were married for 10 years before we had any children. We didn't think we'd be able to have any children. And then I was pregnant five times in six years. Um, but I've got uh, three gorgeous sons and, um, and three lovely grandchildren. And all my life, I, um, I didn't watch anything about the Holocaust on, on television or see any films or read about it or anything. I thought, I know what I need to know. Uh, and um, I just parked it on one side. Um, but then, when I was at my 50s, my sons were teenagers. Um, you know, I thought about it a lot and I thought, well, you know, to all intents and purposes, they seem like ordinary English boys. But of course, they're not because of my background. And I thought, well, if they start asking me about the Holocaust and so on, I didn't really feel equipped um, to talk to them about it. And um, Someone told me that Sheffield University was doing a master's in Holocaust studies and I thought, aha, that is for me. And so I signed up, I did that from 96 to 98 and, um, and I really enjoyed it and I learned a lot. And the, boy, the boys couldn't get over the fact that mum was going back to college. And so I started doing the research and eventually I had enough material for a book and that and much to everyone's surprise including my own I found a publisher um, and actually this is quite important um, particularly for women of my age because you know, women of my age when I was young you weren't expected to be persistent you were meant to be sort of polite and sit in your corner and wait for things to happen, but of course, um, it isn't like that anymore. And I find having the three boys, um, I've learnt a lot from them. And then that was published when I was 65. And, um, and I thought, well, gosh, this is good. And, um, and I gave lots of talks and so on. And then, and then that was it, you know, and I thought, oh, well, that was good. And then after a couple of years, I found that I really missed it. And I said, what about women in the Holocaust? Because I've, I've always been very conscious of my mother's um, story and, um, and that women's experiences in the Holocaust, you know, were very different from men's in many ways. And so the new book is called Women's Experiences in the Holocaust in their own words. I've used the memoirs and letters and I think I might be hanging up my pen or my laptop, except I'm going to write a family memoir, which is what I was going to do after the last book, because um, the boys uh, have asked me. 
And if I don't write it, there isn't anyone left from my family to write it. Um, but it's, um, I mean, it really has changed my life. And I just find it you know, quite amusing, really. I, I divorced my husband in 2000 because he was um, in a, bu- in a very abusive man. He used to tell me I was useless. And, um, and now I've written three books. I've had them published. I got an MBE from the Queen for services to the Jewish community and Holocaust awareness. And next year I'm going to get uh, two honorary doctorates, one from Sheffield, Doctor of Letters, and one from Oxford Brooks, the Doctor of Arts. So I feel, you know, the writing really has changed my life. And um, when I meet people for the first time and they sort of look at me and they see a dumpy elderly woman and they say, oh, I suppose you're retired. And I say, no, actually, I'm still working. And they say, oh, well, what do you do? And I say, oh, well, I'm a writer. <laughs> One man said, oh, do you write cookery books? So I said, no, not really. I write about the Holocaust. It nearly fell off his perch. And another one said, um, oh, novels. And I said, no, I write about the Holocaust. And they're absolutely dumbfounded because it, you know, it doesn't fit in with a picture of what dumpy elderly women do. And I think that's great. Ha, ha, ha.